bit by bit, I've been updating my studio, and so far, I've been really happy with the direction it's taking. But now, I need to improve my live streaming setup here at the workbench. I want to bring people into the builds that I'm working on and be interactive with it. But I don't want to have a computer tying up valuable workbench space. I've got Linus Tech Tips inspiration with server rack mounted computers and fiber optic cables run throughout the house, but I do not have LTT budget. So in this video, we're going to use a little DIY, some 3D printing, even robots, and some more affordable options to achieve a similar result. Let's get to it. When I first set up this studio, I had a 2017 iMac that Ruby wasn't using anymore, that I used for reference information, SSHing into Raspberry Pis, and live streams, though it barely managed that. And I was tired of it taking up the space on the workbench. Now, down here, I have my water-cooled workstation PC. This thing has an RTX 3090 Ti graphics card an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor and 64 gigabytes of RAM in it. Ignore if it's on carpet right now, that is temporary. I use it to edit these videos, do 3D design work and some live streaming. It's a natural choice for this project until you start adding up the expense for the components involved here. Those Icron docks that Linus runs now, they're $1,500, $2,000 for them. The Owens Corning optical Thunderbolt cables he used to run, four, five, six hundred dollars for a cable. When I was faced with those prices, it became evident that it made more sense to build a streaming PC or get a Mac mini and use that here at the bench. But then I attended LTX 2023. Among the many wonderful things there were to see at the event, there was this company, Purify. They produce something that's going to be integral to this project, active optical cables at a reasonable price, relatively anyway. I came home from the event with one of their 15 meter USB-C cables. Now this isn't technically a Thunderbolt cable, but it is USB 4, 40 gigabit per second rated. Now this cable isn't cheap compared to your Amazon special USB-C cables, but those won't handle the data rates that this thing will and work with the dock that we're gonna be using. We'll come back to that though. Let's get this thing installed. When I recently constructed this wall in my studio, I included a section of conduit running through the end of it closest to my desk so I could easily fish wires and change out to different configurations as my needs might evolve. And I also knew that this particular project was coming in really soon, so this is going to make my life easier. All I have to do is feed the wire down through that conduit. There's already a box open at the bottom where I can feed the wire out to my computer. Back at the top side of the cable, it's time to route it across the ceiling so it can drop down to the workbench. This is the first place where 3D printing is gonna come in. I like to print my own cable management pieces when I'm doing things like this. It's easier than just finding some off the shelf ones that might fit, might not fit. I can make them fit to my application. So I've got cable management pieces and a larger piece that we'll take a look at later. Then I can screw these to the ceiling and route over to the drop down for power and networking that already goes down to my my workbench. Of course, that cable has to drop down to something, and that's where this comes in. The Razer Chroma Thunderbolt 4 dock. A quick rundown on this thing. It is a powered dock that has a UHS-2 SD card reader on it, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, three Thunderbolt 4 ports on it, so it can do downstream Thunderbolt or just regular USB-C connections, a gigabit RJ45 network connection, and three 10 gigabit per second USB type A ports. Oh, and probably the most important thing, of course, RGB. Combining this with the cable we just ran unlocks the capability of this workbench to become a full on workstation. I needed a way to mount this and I didn't want to tie up valuable desk space with it sitting on top of the bench, but it still needs to be pretty accessible. So what I ended up doing is jumping into Fusion 360 and designing a little shelf that's going to screw to the underside of the workbench. That'll allow me to slide the dock into it so it has a nice rested position, but I can easily remove it for travel uses when I can take this and hook it up to my laptop, a MacBook, whatever, and use it on the go as I have a couple of times now and I've really enjoyed it for that purpose. 
but the ports are still pretty easily accessible underneath the front edge of my workbench where I can easily just kneel down, make any connections I might need to, and be ready to roll. With the dock in place, a couple more of our 3D prints can come into play, like this little basketball hoop thing that I showed earlier. This is actually going to mount to the top of this extrusion, and it has a big opening on it to guide the wires at this corner of the bench and keep them managed to this extrusion without being fixed and mounted rigidly. Like you might see right now, this is kind of draping here because I only have it taped in place just to cable manage it. This will allow it to slip through that hoop, but still keep it where I want it. Then I have this little pedestal mount, and this is for where we're bringing in a tiny robot to this whole project. This adorable swivel-headed robot is the OBSBOT Tail Air, a 4K resolution capable AI-powered camera. The folks over at OBSBOT sent this over for this project and sponsored this video so I could show you folks what this thing is capable of. This thing has a list of features, but probably the star of the show for a lot of folks is going to be the PTZ functionality with AI tracking. What does that mean? It means pan, tilt, and zoom with hand gesture control so you can control things too. So I just do that and it will zoom in or zoom out. I should definitely note that in that demonstration of its movement there, I had the speed turned up on this camera. You can adjust the speed at which it reacts and follows you. This is the standard normal speed that it's going to track you at. Aside from the tracking functionality, which is the star of the show here, this thing also has a built-in battery, so you can use it as a standalone camera not tethered to anything. It has its own built-in microphone inputs, but I'm actually talking to you through my standard studio microphone right now that's being fed in through an external audio jack on the camera. This isn't just a live streaming camera, it does have internal recording. I'm recording to the micro SD card slot on it right now, but I'm really looking forward to adding this to the stream setup so that I can move around a little bit, be dynamic and work on machines, but not be worried about whether or not the camera is pointing at me because this thing can follow me around while I'm working. The way I'm gonna connect this to my streaming setup is via NDI with this USB-C to network adapter cable. NDI is a network protocol that allows for numerous cameras to be connected to a computer or streaming device and have a reliable connection. I can supply power to this camera, in my case using a PoE switch that I'm mounting underneath of the bench. If you're interested in learning more about the Tail Air or other OBSBOT cameras, there will be links in the description and I'll be featuring it in streams on the Mandic Labs channel coming up. Thanks again to OBSBOT for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to this build so we can get this all wrapped up. At this point, it's about time to start cable management. So I'm gonna work my way from the top down. I need to get the tail air mounted onto this mount that I designed, the hockey puck I showed you earlier. And that's just so I can have a little bit of an overhead angle with that camera down onto the bench. At the other end of the bench is this 27 inch Acer monitor. This is 165 Hertz, 1440p. So overkill for a workbench monitor, but it's the same one I use as my main monitor on the PC. I just really like it. To send video signal to it, I'm gonna be using this USB-C to DisplayPort cable. That'll go from the Thunderbolt box up to the monitor and convert the signal as needed. To cable manage the mess under the desk, I'm gonna be using these 3D printed cable management tabs that I created a while ago that mount with VHB tape. Then it's onward to just cleaning up the mess underneath of here. I've got a handful of devices that I need to get wired up to this Thunderbolt hub so they can go back to the PC through that one cable. Just to list off everything that is connected to that hub, I've got the Zoom F3 audio recorder, my Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro HDMI switcher, that 27 inch monitor, and my old Logitech G710 mechanical keyboard. And I ran one USB-C cable that I'm just gonna leave free and hanging around for hooking up to boards and programming things while I'm working on machines. And a little bit of time and a lot of bit of patience later, we've got a somewhat cable managed underside of my bench. Now there's a lot going on under here, not just the stuff that's plugged into the dock, but you know, power supplies for that PoE switch, for my soldering iron, for my benchtop power supply unit. There's a lot of things that have to be plugged in underneath of here so that this bench can just be as simple as it is. And don't get me wrong, Linus makes this look easy 
it's not. I hooked up that single Thunderbolt cable, USB 4, whatever, back to my computer and set it all up. It didn't work. I troubleshot, troubleshot, unplugged, replugged, worked with it, used a shorter cable that actually came with the Razer dock and plugged it into the computer. That worked. The long cable I had here from Purify just was not working. But if I plugged in my Intel powered HP laptop, which does have Thunderbolt on it, to that cable going to the dock over here at the bench, that worked fine. So I thought, oh great, now I'm just gonna have to use my laptop still, but remotely instead. But somebody on Twitter gave me a great idea that was to actually daisy chain docks. You see, I do have another Thunderbolt dock on my desk that USB peripherals are plugged into, and that works just fine and did through all of my testing. So I plugged the long cable into the output on that dock, and now the workbench, this dock, is working as expected. It was certainly a bit of a hassle to get this set up, so I'm sure some of you out there are wondering, was this worth it at all? These parts are not necessarily that cheap. Thank you to Razer and Purify for providing them for this project, by the way, but even at their retail costs, I could have built a small form factor PC or still gotten that Mac Mini to run here. But it was cheaper than it would have been the way Linus has set up his configurations in the past, and I'm also running an AMD system. Thunderbolt is an Intel standard. If I had run an Intel-based system, I probably would have had a better time getting this all configured and hooked up. But where it really came down to for me was I didn't want to split my computer budget for the year between a streaming PC that I'll use once, twice a week and a desktop that I use every single day to make my living. If I'm going to be upgrading something, I'd rather the money be going into the main PC versus splitting it between two separate systems. Now I've got the stream setup that I've really been wanting to put together. This bench is more open and free for me to actually just work on projects. I've got a few things I can flip some switches. I've got a powerful computer and I'm stream ready without worrying about dropping frames. And I've got a new perspective on things too with the OBSBOT tail air in the mix. Hooked up via the NDI connection that it is, it's getting power. It's getting a solid connection to send signal to the computer. It is just going to be a reliable setup that allows for a little new perspective on things while I'm streaming. Thanks again to OBSBOT for sponsoring this video. And folks, I think that is gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you found this video interesting. This has been a really fun project that I've been wanting to do for way too long. I mean, LTX was July of 2023 and I'm finally getting around to this setup. Here we are, it's ready. Now I just need to make some time for some streams. I've got a couple of new printers in the box ready to get unboxed. So I think uh, we're gonna start doing that really soon. Maybe even before this video went up. Hope you found this video interesting, folks. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy this one where I recently rebuilt the backdrop of my studio, or this one that YouTube thinks is best for you. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can hurt. See you, folks.